Hi everyone, and welcome to Mr. Carlson's lab. Today I have a really neat flashlight from 1940. So it's a World War II flashlight that doesn't require batteries. So this thing lights up without batteries. Pretty neat little device. Today we're gonna take it apart, look inside, and see what makes this thing work. Let's get started. These flashlights were intended for soldiers in the field and the like, places where batteries were not available at all, really. So you are the power source for this thing. So there's a little lock here and that releases the lever that spins up the little dynamo inside or generator if you like. And on the front here is a little lens. Lens comes off and there is no bulb. So I'm gonna have to go digging through my bulbs and see if I can find something for this. And hopefully the dynamo works. We're gonna discover this together. So I carved up a little screwdriver and made sure it fit and it does fit in this. So I just took one of my old junk screwdrivers and filed the center out of it. And it looks like a, an early type security bit, but it's, uh, these are quite different screws. So that fits in there just right. So now that I've got a screwdriver that works with this, I can now open it. It looks like some people over time have been inside this thing and marred the screws up. So this fits really, really nice. So I won't damage the screws any further. It looks like there's probably opened with a pair of you know, needle nose pliers or something like that. So that fits in there very positive. And, um, yeah, it won't cause any further damage to these screws. I've been humming and hawing about actually restoring this, you know, stripping the case and repainting it, the kind of drab olive green type of color just to bring it back. But it does have a certain kind of class to the patina that is on this. It really shows that it has been used. So you can let me know in the comments below, do you think I should actually go ahead and restore this thing, repaint it, make it look like brand new again? And uh, I may just do that right here on this channel and share that process with you. I'd probably you know, clean the case up really good and do all of that. So again, undecided. So now I removed the screws on this side. You can see the lever runs down into this side here. And I don't know if there's any springs pressing up against this. So that's the reason that I went towards the uh, side that has basically all the paint worn right off of it. So let's see what happens. Oh, it is opening and there's nothing pressing up against this so I'm good nothing wants sprawling and it looks like it's all one piece pretty much maybe aside from this yeah that would fall out that's the little lock so you can see how this here would lock into this and hold the, the lever down Right? And then you slide that little lock back and then this pops up. So it can very easily be dropped into a pocket. You know, they thought of everything when they put this together, very easily put away. A little piece of paper on the front, which probably really doesn't do much, but in the day, this was probably brilliant white. So it acted as a reflector, maybe for the lens. It really is no other reason for that in there, right? So you can just remove that for now. And we'll take a closer look at what we have inside this. So you can see the little dynamo back here, or generator if you like. Ooh, and some pretty crude balancing. Look at that. Nice gearing in here. The gearing looks really nice. Yeah, it doesn't look like any teeth are missing there. This looks to be like a fibrous type of gear. And that looks like metal. So the reason that they've probably done that, usually they do put a fibrous gear up against something that's geared like this just because it would create a lot of noise, right? So this cuts the noise down quite a bit. You can usually indicate them or, you know, identify them, I should say, pretty quickly because they usually have two metal, you know, they almost look like washers on each side and then they're riveted together holding the, the fibrous gear in the middle. So if this was a metal gear, you know, there'd be none of this. It'd just be a solid metal gear, right? And the actual arm itself, that spins the other gear. I don't know if you can see down inside that. Oh, 
that spins on another metal gear down inside there. I'll take this other portion of the case off here in a moment. We'll take a closer look at that. I can see a really heavy spring back here, but it looks like it's up against the actual, the framework here of the generator itself, whole gearing mechanism. So I don't think this is going to go, see it is relatively loose now with the case off and it's not really, there's nothing springy really pushing on it. So I think we can get away with opening that up. So you can see here, if I give it a squeeze, and that little dynamo spins and powers up a bulb in the front here. So what I'll do is remove this other side here. Nice short little screws here. It's nice that all the original screws are there and it what looks to be the original lens as well. But it's pretty loose. That lens is almost wanting to fall off. So I'll have to take a closer look at that here in just a moment. So yeah, it just comes off. Look at that. So you can completely remove the case and we can see what's going on in there. So we have this is metal here and a nice metal gear down there. Lots of uh, old grease and looks to be like fuzz and stuff stuck in there. You can see the little dynamo here. One lead comes out and solders to the case. The other one runs right over to the bulb, to the center connection of the bulb. And that would be insulated from this with these little, again, fibrous type washers so it doesn't short to the case. So I'll see if I can pinch this without it pinching me. So it must be a, a neat little clutch mechanism going on inside here because as you can see, it grabs onto the gear and starts to spin it. But when you let go, it can spin backwards right in there. So like a one-way clutch type of thing going on inside there. Imagine if that was, you know, everything, all the old grease was cleared out of there and everything was re-oiled. I imagine uh, I might get a little bit more speed out of that. Now, of course, when a bulb is going to be put inside this thing, uh, you know, it's going to load this little dynamo down so it'll slow things up just a little bit, right? Very heavy spring. You know, that's the reason they put the red paint on there. It's like, don't undo this. So that looks like that has, yes, a lot of, a lot of tension there. So... Yeah, that uh, definitely, uh, that would be a dangerous spring to remove this. You'd have to be very, very careful with that. So, let's actually see if the dynamo, if there's uh, any resistance in the winding. That'll tell us if this thing is going to even try to light up a bulb. And that'll also give you a good idea if you ever get one of these little flashlights. If you find one, you can test the dynamo yourself and see if the dynamo is uh, still working. All right, let's see if we have any resistance here. Hopefully that's somewhat viewable. Looks like it's okay. Get that into focus there. So we need to measure from case to one of these little rivets would be okay because that's isolated from the case with a little fibrous washer. So technically, if I touch one of these little, little washers on the top here, that's the same as the connection in the center down in there. So I'll find a place on the case to stick one portion of the probe and touch here. And the resistance reading is 10 ohms. All right, probably get a better connection maybe over right here. Yeah, there we go. So 10 ohms, I would say. Now that's 10 ohms if this little dynamo is working. Hopefully there's no shorted windings in there. We'll find that out when we thread some, some different bulbs in here and uh, try that out. So just give this a squeeze one more time just to make sure that that is a, a true 10 ohms that we're seeing here. Yep, 
Yeah, no problems. That's really almost spot on 10 ohms. So there you have it. So again, if uh, I screw a bulb in here and we can get some light out of it, and uh, that would be the resistance reading for the windings inside this. All right, I'll go grab a, a bunch of bulbs and see if we can uh, make some light out of this thing. There was some information on the bottom of this on the uh, part of the case that still has some paint on it. So I'll zoom into this. So it says two volts. You can see that two volts at 0 0.1 amps. So that would be 100 milliamps. So two volts, 100 milliamp bulb. Now I've just got a whole bunch of different thread in bulbs. We'll see what happens when uh, we put a bunch of different ones in there. Maybe we can get some more or maybe even less light. Let's find out. Let's look through my box of bulbs here and see if we can light something up. So let's grab one that looks like it's already been, this one here looks like I pulled a bulb out of it already. All right, let's try that one out. Well, it's lighting it up. You see that? Be careful with my fingers here. See that? So it's lighting it up. Well, that's a, a good thing. Let's take a look at what the specs on the bulb are. <laughs> that's a 12 volt bulb and it's lighting it up. So no problems there. You might be thinking to yourself, if you put the wrong bulb in there, or the bulb draws too much current, is it going to hurt the dynamo? No, it's not going to hurt the dynamo. So let's try this. I believe these are old pen light bulbs. The triple two? It is. The ones with the little lens on it. So these are little incandescent bulbs with a little lens on the front. These were used in pen lights way back, way back when. So I wonder if it'll light that up, because that would be the voltage would be closer to the spec, but I think the current might be a little high. Let's see. No, there's no light coming out of that at all. So that must be drawing quite a bit of current to, or require a lot of current to light that bulb up. So no good there. So we got a little bit of light out of the 12 volt bulb and it requires a two volt. So these must be a pretty low current bulbs. In order to do that, what else have I got in here? Back. A larger style bulb. Probably going to take quite a bit of current to light that up. Here, let's take a look through here and see. Let's get this out of the way over here. Right here. Let's see what we got. This one. Oh, look at that. Hardly even a touch and that thing's lighting up. That's nice. Lots of light out of that one. So let's see what this bulb is. I imagine finding the original bulbs for this would be somewhat difficult. So it's a six volt bulb at 0 0.05 amps. So it's six volts at 50 milliamps. And it's a Phillips bulb. Well, that's the reason it works. It's a Phillips bulb and a little Phillips flashlight. There we have it. What is it? What's the number of the bulb? Looks like 7121D. Hopefully that's right. So this lights up very nicely in here. I would say that is a very good substitute for whatever the original bulb is. They wanted a two volt 100 milliamp. Well, this is six volt at 50 milliamps and it's lighting up. That's a that's really lighting up nicely. Look at that, just a touch of the lever and that really gets bright. So, and I don't think 
you'd really, it doesn't get overly bright. So I don't think you'd burn it out if you spun it too quickly. I'd say that's probably just about right. So there we go. So what I'll do is I'll put this back into the green case so I can actually, you know, give this a decent squeeze without, you know, getting my fingers in the gearing here. And um, let's see what it looks like all back in the case and uh, operating the way it most likely would have way back when. Looks like the lens, I think there's a little piece broken off of the lens here. So it doesn't stay in there very well. You can see right here, a little piece broken off outside. There's supposed to be a little tab there. So I could probably glue a little piece of a nylon tie strap and cut a little square off there and that would probably work just fine on the lens. But it does wedge tight, so See that there, it does wedge tight, so it holds it. All right, look at that. That's really bright. So yeah, it definitely needs that little tab fixed. Maybe if I do a restoration on this, I'll go about doing that. So that would be the only downfall with this thing, of course, is you would need to keep moving this, but it doesn't need to be moved very fast to get a lot of light out of it. So. Now the improvements that could be done to this thing nowadays would be pretty incredible. If I was to install a, an LED in here and a capacitor, maybe even a, a small regulator of sorts, you know, one pull of this, you know, your one press of this little um, lever might, you know, give quite a bit of time on an LED before it actually starts to dim out. So, you know, you might actually get some time out of it, but this is an incandescent bulb, right? So, but I don't think I would want to modify this just because this is so original and it's all complete, all the, even all the original screws and what looks to be the original lens is even there. So uh, this might make just a, a very nice restoration. Or again, you know, just leave it original with the patina on it. So it'd be very interesting. I wish this thing could talk. It would be very, very interesting to listen to the history that this thing could tell. Neat little device, that's for sure. 1940s. If you enjoyed this video, you can let me know by giving me a big thumbs up and hang around. There'll be more videos like this coming in the near future. We'll be doing restorations, repairs, teardowns, all of that great stuff on this channel. So don't forget to subscribe and tap that bell symbol if you'd like to be notified as soon as I post a brand new video. If you're interested in taking your electronics knowledge to the next level and learning electronics in a very different and a very effective way and gain access to my inventions, definitely check out my ongoing electronics course on Patreon. I'll put the link just below the video's description under the show more tab and I'll pin the link at the top of the comment section. So if you click on that link, it'll take you right there. You can check it out. All right, until next time, take care. Bye for now.